Hi everyone! Uh, welcome back to another Eddie Burback video. That's me. I'm that guy. I just wanted to inform you real quick uh, that this video was shot today on February 1st, 2020. It's not being filmed during the quarantine. It's not being filmed in the future, is what I meant to say, where I don't know anything that's gonna happen. This is being filmed right now in, Mar in February of 2020. You can probably tell that this video is about commercials. I just thought, you know, nothing's going on, but why would I talk about something that's really heavy or something that somebody's doing wrong when I can just get drunk and, you know, watch some commercials and talk about some classic commercials that I like, the ones that I hate. So if you like having drinks as well, and it's not an issue, and you're also of age, why don't you uh, drink with me, and let's talk about some dumb advertisements. So I thought I would divide my favorite and least favorite ads into maybe some different sections. And I think the first one that I want to cover is companies handling memes. <music> Meme culture has evolved so fast on the internet that regular people have a hard time catching up. I feel like I've been getting better at paying attention and getting good memes in the last year, but Dude, Gen Z kids, I can't compete with them. I know we're so close in age, where I think I'm like the last year of millennia, who fucking cares? But kids that are like a few years younger than me are so much funnier at memes. How the fuck did you guys get that funny? So if me, a 23 year old, please uh, don't say, wow, you're 23. I thought you were like 35. Ouch, C come on, dude. But as I was saying, if I'm 23 and I can't make top tier memes, how can you expect a company to. It's a bunch of old executives or maybe some young people at ad agencies, but still they're not as good as 16 year olds making big chungus. There are two ad campaigns that I can think of that didn't super nail meme culture, but are like pretty decent at making some good old normie memes. And so these weren't super in depth of meme culture, but first I wanna mention the godfather, I think, of meme ads, the Old Spice commercials. Hello, ladies. Look at your man. Now back to me. Now back at your man. Now back to me. Sadly, he isn't me. But if he stopped using ladies' scented body wash and switched to Old Spice, he could smell like he's me. Look down. Back up. Where are you? You're on a boat with the man your man could smell like. The original Old Spice Your Man Could Smell Like Me ad is kind of perfect. It's attention grabbing, it's not dishonest, it's funny, it's complicated in the way that they made it. Altogether, it's just great. Now by today's standards, this isn't really a meme, it's just kind of a comedy video, but at the time, the internet went crazy for it. And then Old Spice made more comedy videos and even some more type of meme ads, kind of like the Terry Crews ones. But the more comedy sketch and non-meme ones were also amazing, like this one here. You gotta wash your body the manly way And the freshness will follow you all through your day It's literally following you everywhere This could actually be a fairly serious problem This is not good because he's probably ruining that person's body who he's operating on This is way more freshness than anyone expected New Old Spice Bar so never leave your house again so while these aren't modern memes, I still consider it like an internet success that they did very well. And I also want to mention, I think I'm talking about this because my friend Drew Gooden talked about Old Spice in a video before in their advertising. I love these advertisements. I think it changed an old, shitty kind of company into being the new modern deodorant. And so shout out to Drew. Please go subscribe to him. I love Drew and maybe you'll see him in my next up upload, or uh, maybe not. Maybe that falls through, who knows. I'll go back and forth between good and bad advertisements. So a bad meme ad that I would like to talk about that I personally fucking hate is the goddamn Wendy's meme ad. Wendy's new jalapeno fresco spicy chicken is so deliciously hot, it's generating reactions from Ooh. everyone, like the memer. Ooh, eat spicy goodness like a boss. The selfies. They're good. Gotta get a selfie. So hot. Got a selfie or selfie. And the behind the times are. Mm, this sandwich is the bomb. Raise the roof. 
Wendy's new jalapeno fresco. Whew, okay. How do I explain exactly why this ad just felt so shitty? What we all need to admit to ourselves is back in 2010 to 2013, 14, we all liked top text, bottom text memes and rage comics, and we all thought they were funny, which means they can't not be funny because we all liked them at the time. So now we've just moved past it. Now our parents like them, which I used to think, oh, I liked those memes because I was in eighth grade, but it seems like our parents like them too. So it's just a thing about being new to the internet. And I think seeing internet jokes, you need to like, go further and further down a rabbit hole to enjoy them more. But when this ad was made, top text, bottom text memes were already super stale. And so to see a corporation go like, people are buzzing about this. Here's a really outdated joke that you all hate now. It just felt so disingenuous, but people talked about it. So when I say bad advertisement, it's really that I just don't like it. But I guess Wendy's has revived themselves by having Wendy's Twitter. I think some people shouldn't go so crazy about Wendy's tweeting at Burger King and being like, your burgers suck. Yo, Wendy said uh, Burger King's burgers suck. Funniest shit I've ever seen in my fucking life. The next kind of section that I wanna talk about are infomercial guys. There's a good and a bad one, and you can probably already guess what they were. I'll start with the good one. There is a commercial legend that we lost some years ago. That man's name is Billy Mays. Billy Mays, if you're too young to know, was a goddamn national treasure. Billy Mays could sell anything. Billy Mays could hold a gun to my head and sell me on paying him to pull the trigger. And I'd do it. I wanna show you the legend in action and the one that always sticks with me, I don't know why, there's two, this fucking space bags one and that, what the hell was that putty shit that he always advertised? Hi, Billy Mays here for Mighty Putty. The easy way to fix, fill and seal virtually anything fast and make it last. Mighty Putty is not a glue but a super powered epoxy that you can mold to any shape and apply directly to most any surface for an everlasting bond. Ordinary epoxies are a mixing mess. With Mighty Putty, you just cut like dough, simply knead to activate, apply and let dry. Instantly, I just believe Billy about the, the everlasting bond of the putty. I don't know what it is. There's just something so sweet about the man. I don't know if it's his voice or his just general demeanor. He's selling me something. And I normally have extreme distrust for anyone selling me anything. But I hear Billy and it's like, just t take it. I'll give you my bank account, making OnlyFans. Dude, he's dead. What are, what are you doing? You can't joke about Billy Mace having an OnlyFans. I'm gonna be honest, guys. I didn't eat anything today and I'm really uh, powering through these beers and I'm getting pretty buzzed. So, you're gonna see a new side of me today. <laughs> Turning from green to white to show it's ready to hold on tight. It has the strength to pull this fully loaded 80,000 pound tractor trailer. Now that's the power of Mighty Putty. Did Mighty Putty work? Cause it, when he says it, it sounds like a miracle, but I believe him. He said it cuts like dough. I believe it. You can hang a shelf with it. No screws, no wall anchors. No studs in the wall, nothing. You could just fucking stick a shelf again. I believe it. Also space bags. You could store something in a bag and also suck it. Imagine not sucking your clothes. They're just all puffy and unsucked the whole time. Get the fuck out of here. Whew, uh, just a quick correction. I'm a little embarrassed to say this, but Billy Mays never advertised the space bags. I could have sworn he did, but it was a different infomercial. But this guy was an icon. His products included the awesome auger, the big city slider station, DC snowboards, the ding king, dual saw, engrave it, ESPN 360, easy bundler, easy crunch bowl, flies away, gator blades, <laughs> skater blades. Gator blades? I just got to G on the products he pitched. There's so many of them. He's a, a legend. Make an OnlyFans. <laughs> Fuck. Okay. <laughs> Moving on. There's no way it could have pulled the tractor trailer though, right? Did Billy Mays lie to us and we just still love him? Because I'm fine with that. I'll get conned by Billy any day. And his exact opposite is, you fucking guessed it, the ShamWow guy. There's a couple of things I think right off the bat with the ShamWow guy. One, his hair at the time was cool. And I feel bad about that every day. 
I spiked my hair up at the beginning of high school. What was with all of us spiking hair 10 years ago? Nobody spiked their hair for like all of humanity. And then like 1990 to 2010, we were just spiking our hair, making our hair hard as shit. Why were we doing that? Why does that make me so mad? Cause I fell for it. I would see a dude with spiked hair. Dude, when I saw Sora in Kingdom Hearts 2 as a kid, I was like, his hair so fucking spiky. That's so, or Yu-Gi-Oh! I, let me, I'll try and dig up the picture. But when I saw Yu-Gi-Oh! as a kid, I went uh, trick-or-treating once as Yu-Gi-Oh! And I had rubber Yu-Gi-Oh! hair. I'll ask my mom. Why was spiked hair so cool? What if your hair could be hard? I'm getting drunk, dude. Hi, it's Vince with Sham Wow. You'll be saying wow every time you use this towel. It's like a chamois, it's like a towel, it's like a sponge. A regular towel doesn't work wet. This works wet or dry. This is for the house, the car, the boat, the RV. Sham Wow holds 20 times its weight in liquid. Look at this, it just does the work. Why do you want to work twice as hard? Doesn't trip. Doesn't make a mess. Wring it out. You wash it in the washing machine. Made in Germany. You know the Germans always make good stuff. There's also this attitude. I don't know if it's his accent or the way he's talking, but there's just something about it that feels like he's lying to me. Billy Mays would coddle me. He would tell me how good the product was. But the attitude of the ShamWow guy is like, what the fuck's wrong with you? Why wouldn't you want a ShamWow? Look at this. Put on the spill. Turn it over. Without even putting any pressure, 50% of the cola Right there. You follow me, camera guy? Can somebody say in the comments if your parents bought a ShamWow or if you bought one and it was good? Because he seems so confident in it, but I don't know. All right, moving on to a category that I think is very important, music. Now specifically, I want to talk about annoying music. Annoying music can make, I think, a good ad or also a very bad ad. No matter what, if it's sticking in your head, it's good advertising. But I'm judging it on how much hate I have in my heart for that exact ad. And an ad that I have love in my heart for, and some people might hate, but I loved the creditreport.com songs. Well, I was shopping for a new car. Which one's me? A cool convertible or an SUV? Too bad I didn't know my credit was whack, because now I'm driving off the lot in a used subcompact. F-R-E-E, -E, that spells free. Creditreport.com, baby. Saw their ads on my TV. Thought about going, but was too lazy. Now instead of looking fly and rolling fat, my legs are sticking to the vinyl and my posse's getting laughed at. F-R-E-E, -E, that spells free, creditreport.com, baby. Offer applies with enrollment and triple advantage. I absolutely fucking love these ads. The songs are pretty catchy and good, and there were, I believe, nine of the commercials, and you follow the same story of this guy who's just broke because of his credit score. It's such a good ad because it grabs your attention, and the guy is suffering from not checking his credit score, so it makes you want to go do it too. This is a very good advertisement, and the songs are bangers. Here's another one. Well, I married my dream girl. I married my dream girl, but she didn't tell me her credit was bad. So now instead of living in a pleasant suburb, we're living in the basement at her mom and dad. Though we can't get a loan for a respectable home, just because my girl defaulted on some old credit card. If we'd gone to freecreditreport.com, I'd be a happy bachelor with a dog and a yard. Now, another very catchy music commercial that I have hate in my heart for are the J.G. Wentworth ads. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I am very sorry for what I'm about to do to your brain forever. I have a structured settlement and I need cash now. Call J.G. Wentworth, 877 cash now. I have an annuity, but I need cash now. Call J.G. Wentworth. I don't know what it is about JG fucking Wentworth, but this opera shit stuck in my head up until right now. Even this year, sometimes I will be drifting off to sleep and this fucking song will come back. I don't have an annuity and need cash now. I don't fucking need JG Wentworth. Yet I still think of the ad. And that's good advertising. I don't want people to come in and go, well, 
you know, the ones that you said were bad, you still remember them. I know. I just hate it still. I want J.G. Wentworth to, I want to drop him off a balcony. And they made a sequel that was actually in an opera. Here's that. I have a structured settlement and I need cash now. Call J.G. Wentworth, 877 cash now. I have an annuity, but I need cash now. Call J.G. Wentworth, 877 cash now. 877 cash now. That's a different ad, but the same song. So I had just gotten over hearing that song every day in front of SpongeBob. And then they run another ad campaign with the same song. I didn't want to hear it again. And I don't want to hear it again now and I'm doing that to you. So I had to cut a lot of stuff just because I recorded way too much for the regular length of a YouTube video. So there are two things I want to talk about before I end everything. And I just want to shorten them because I talked about them for way too long when I recorded. The first are the Doritos Super Bowl ads. Doritos used to have a Super Bowl competition where people could send in advertisements and they would choose one, give them a cash prize, and play their ad in the Super Bowl. And it was really great and they were really fun creative ads for years, but then it became this gross like people from LA trying to, you know, show off their, their directorial or writer skills and it just became way too much of an industry thing and the thing got ruined. But it resulted in some of the funniest commercials that I've ever seen and I really wish Doritos would bring it back and just kind of ban uh, industry stuff. I don't even know if that's possible. But also, there's one more advertisement that is just like being wrapped in a blanket for me. It's so comfortable. And it's this Chef Boyardee commercial. Oh, not tonight, sweetie. You've had Chef every night this week. But I love Chef. Chef Boy RD. Boy, this stuff is good. I would feel too bad cutting this out of the video. I don't know if it's because the age I was at the time or the comforting music, but something about this advertisement is just so nostalgic that I love it so, so much. Also, uh, the mom has no option but to think that her child stole the Chef Boyardee, which is a little weird. Um, I wonder what that conversation was like. But either way, I just wanted to give a shout out to this ad before I ended the video. So uh, let's cut back to me. It's so great that it's February 1st of 2020 because nothing will ever go wrong. And this is my year. I'm glad I'm just drinking beers. Uh, the Bears, am I right, guys? Maybe go to an NF <clears throat> maybe go to an NFL game. But I really do want to say just to you guys, I hope you're safe and I hope you're doing well. And I realize this is a hard time for everybody. I hope you're getting through this kind of difficult time. And um, thank you for watching my stuff and supporting it. We're back again with another sponsorship, and I want to thank. Raycon for sponsoring this video. Does this look threatening? I was gonna do this ad by myself, uh, but my good friend Ray J is here. Everyone welcome Ray J. Hi Ray J. What's that Ray J? Raycon earbuds, why are you so quiet? You always whisper to me. Raycon earbuds started about half the price of any other premium wireless earbuds on the market? Ray J. And the sound is just as amazing as other top audio brands you know. Raycons are great for working from home, working out. I can attest to that. I, I run in these bad boys every single day. Workout life. I run. <laughs> and listening to music and podcasts like the Gus and Eddie podcast, uh, available now for hours without driving your roommates slash significant others slash children slash neighbors crazy? What? What? Their everyday E25 earbuds are the best model yet with six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass, and more compact design that gives you a nice no uh, noise isolating fit and I can't read. But Ray J, can I click the link in the description and get 15% off my order? I can. 
and it's right the link down below buy raycon.com slash eddie and i use raycons actually every day and i do like the product and it's i've been using them since like november and i've had no problems at all is that what i'm saying yes uh buy them buy the headphones um <clears throat> thanks thanks